Welcome to lesson 2.8, Analyze the Graphs of Polynomial Functions. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, this one, oh, I actually have a typo here. We don't need, this must still just be left over from a different section. Uh, we don't need to worry about the vocab at the moment. Uh, but what we do need to do is we need to be able to graph this function. Now, this is an intercept form, so we know where it has its x-intercepts at, which happens at negative 3. So we have an x-intercept right there, and it also has an x-intercept at positive 2. Now, this is a repeating solution, so what happens when that's on your x-intercept is what's called a bounce. So that is the bounce point of, say this is coming down, it hits that point and immediately bounces back up. It doesn't cross, it just bounces. Uh, so when that happens, uh, that means we know that this is going to do something, and when it hits that point, it's going to bounce. What else do we know? Well, we have a total of one, then two, three x's. Uh, so our highest degree for this polynomial will be three. Now, when it's an odd-numbered polynomial, uh, that means it's either going to start low and end high, or start high and end low. When that's the case here, we also then have to look at, will that leading coefficient be positive or negative? Well, in this case, our leading coefficient is that 1 sixth, which is positive. So that means it's going to behave more like just that line y equals x, where it starts low, ends high. That gives us a good idea as to what will happen between these points, because that means we will come up through this point, we'll peak at some point, come back down, hit the bounce point, and then shoot back up top. The only real piece of information that's missing from this uh, would be where is this maximum point over here? And for that, I'd just strongly suggest using a calculator. So if we come to our calculator, we can type in that 1 sixth times x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared. And if we just come back and just look at our graph, it should come up, it goes through, it bounces just like we talked about, and then shoots back up. So if we just need to find this topmost point, we can go and trace, and we can find our maximum point. Uh, so what we're trying to do is find this maximum point that's just worried about that one little area. Uh, you could call it a local maximum. Uh, so we just need to go to the left of that maximum point, hit enter, then we go over to the right, hit enter again, just hit enter once more to guess, and our local maximum is going to be there when x is about negative one and a third, and y is at about three. So coming back to this, at about negative one and a third, we then have to go up one, two, three. So we need to have a local maximum point there. So our original graph wasn't actually too far off. But one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is just be able to draw a rough approximation of what a graph looks like. Finding a local maximum or minimum point is not as necessary to just drawing a rough approximation because we were able to do all of everything and actually do a rough drawing as to where that local maximum would be just with the knowledge we know based off of the highest degree and if it's positive or not, uh, as well as knowing that little piece about the bounce uh, with that double repeated uh, solution. So just talking about uh, a local minimum is if you just zoom in on a spot, it's going to be that lowest most point. It might be, not be the lowest, the lowest point of the entire function, but just of that area could be locally a minimum. Or a local maximum would be the same type of thing. This is not the highest most point because this point right here is higher. Or if we go further to the right, this point right here is going to be higher. But off of the graph itself, if we just looked at this sort of portion right here, that's going to be the highest point. It's a local maximum. Uh, a turning point is where is another name for those local maximum or minimums. Uh, it's where it turns from going up to going down or going down to going up. So uh, now we can use our calculator to graph these functions. Um, 
identify x-intercepts and local maximums and minimums. Uh, let's just look at that first one here. Uh, let me pull up my graphing calculator for you. So here we've got our graphing calculator. Uh, let's come on back to our y equals. So our first graph was x to the third minus 3x squared plus 6. Uh, it, we've got a turning point here and here. Uh, so that's great and helpful. Uh, if we were to actually try to solve this, you're going to come up with one zero right here, which I believe is going to be when x equals one. Let's just check that quick. Oh, no, not one. I meant negative one. Uh, no, it's actually a little bit less than negative one. So this would be a tough one to graph by hand. Uh, if I had to do it, I would probably just go second table and plot these points uh, and whatever could fit on the graph would be helpful enough. Uh, if you ever need to zoom in and have more like do it in half point increments, you can also go second window uh, so we can go up to table set. And then if you just change this delta or this triangle table to 0.5. Uh, that triangle means the change in. You've probably seen it in like uh, the change in y over the change in x for slope. Uh, we can do that here as well, and that will just change what our table changes by. Uh, so now you can see that, oh, at one and a half we'll be at negative four, at one we'll be at positive two, at negative a half we'll be at positive five, then we go up to six, and then we start going back down a little bit, uh, but then we start going back up again. Uh, so it can give you more specific information in the table that way. The other piece that you should just know in that table set area is this table start asks, where do you want the numbers to start at? So you can start that at zero and it will start at zero because I know I'll forget about this. I'll change this back to a one just so that the next time I go to my table, it's back to changing by ones. So our next equation that we were going to try to graph uh, was that X to the fourth uh, minus 6x to the third plus 3x squared plus 10x minus 3. Uh, and if I were to graph that quick, we have a local minimum, a local maximum. It looks like it drops back down and has another local minimum down here that's off the screen and then it shoots back up. Uh, so if I were to try to graph this by hand, I'd use the table, plot those points, would probably have to shrink the table into another half step increments again. Uh, and like last time, uh, I would find those local minimums and maximums by going second calc, and you can either find minimum or maximum. So I did maximum before, so let's just do minimum this time. Uh, so to find this point, we need to go to the left of that point. And then we would have to go to the right of that point. Uh, and then zeroes in on that point, which is at about negative a half. So that's another way that you can try to find those points specifically, so that if I do ask you to name what those minimums or maximum points are, you can do that using your calculator. The last thing with this lesson uh, is finding maximums and minimums is just another way that you can try to uh, apply these things to real world scenarios. So let's say uh, you are uh, working for a company that is shipping stuff out in boxes and you are trying to cut the corners out of just a plain cardboard sheet to fold up the sides to make a box and you wanna try to maximize the volume that you get out of this box. Well, what you have to do is you have to cut out uh, corners of the sheet. So you cut out amounts and it has to be the same on all four sides. So we'll just call it an X by X square out of the corner that you're cutting out. Uh, and so if we're trying to find the volume, we need to figure out what that value of X is that will maximize the amount of volume in the box. Because if you don't cut anything out, you have a two dimensional sheet that will have no volume because uh, well, it can't hold anything because there's no sides to the box. If you cut your X's too deep, your sides are going to fold up completely, but will be flat. And again, if you put two sides together, that means there's no space for everything in between. So it has to be somewhere between those two extremes. 
Now, volume is just length times width times height. So our length would be 20, but we're cutting out two X's worth of the 20 inch side. So we'll do 20 minus two X will be our length. Our width will be 16 minus two X because it was 16 inches wide, uh, but then we are cutting out again, two X's worth. And then our height is going to be X because that's going to be how tall this is once it gets folded. Well, we can multiply this out. Uh, and when we do that, we're going to get, uh, let's see, 320 minus 72 X plus four X squared. And then that's supposed to be multiplied by X. So we'll get 320 X minus 72 X squared plus four X cubed. Now, what I would do for this is I would just go and jump straight to our graphing calculator with this one, uh, because these numbers are kind of big and hard to sort of picture or imagine. So let's go uh, to our y equals, and we can just type that in. So 320x minus 72x squared plus 4x to the third. And if I just hit graph, uh, you can see it's thinking in the upper right hand corner there. Oh, okay. Well, you can see right here, it drops back down to a volume of zero. So that's the point at which we've cut it too far, but we can't actually see the height here. Uh, so since we're working with volumes with fairly large numbers, let's just say I want my height so that Y max to go up to a thousand. So again, you hit window and you can just more fine tunely adjust the numbers that you want. So now my y is going from negative 10 up to 1,000. Aha! So we can now see our maximum point is going to be right here in this area somewhere. So we can go second calc, find the maximum point, uh, and we need to click at some point to the left of the top. So we're currently to the left of the top. We need to go to the right of the top, hit enter, and then we'll hit enter once more. And our top is when we cut out about 2.95, about 2.9 and a half. You could even round it to about three. Uh, and that's going to maximize the amount of volume. Uh, the question asked then what is X? Well, X is three or about 2.9. What is the volume when you cut that out? Well, it's going to be about 420 because the volume was our Y value in this case. So the final dimensions then, uh, I'll bring you back for this. Uh, since we know that X is three, uh, that means 20 is subtracting two sets of three. So that'd be 20 minus six is 14. 16 minus six would give us 10. So it's going to be a 14 by 10 by three box. And that's all the more there is to this section. So as always, uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions and otherwise, good luck.